Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. Welcome in. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. Goal is to get you to retirement through ideas, thoughts, commentary, second opinions, anything I can do, hints, tips, tricks. I've been doing this a long time. I've created wealth for myself. I've created wealth for my family. I've created wealth for the listeners. Um, I did well as the portfolio manager at my company, New Focus Financial, for many years. Uh, built a nice company, um, so to speak, and then ultimately we decided to work with EP Wealth because I think financial planning is a really key important thing of wealth. And uh, they do financial planning really, really well. In fact, they work with my family on our financial planning goals and needs, which is totally different than accumulating wealth. I got the accumulating wealth down, or I did, and I still do, I think, but let's not be too cocky and arrogant. As even Warren Buffett is out there today saying investment opportunities look May. Middle. Not great. Today we're going to hear SCOTUS, social media content moderation cases. That's interesting. If you own companies like, um, I'm not going to say X, but I guess you would say Meta and Facebook are obviously the two biggest ones, or they're the same company, but the same two names that we have to think about when we're thinking about social media moderation content. Uh, Twitter does fall into that world, or X and moderation snap not so much google a little bit um but you get the idea of what's what's in google's particularly by youtube by the way is what i was implying so what else do we get we talk about berkshire hathaway that's for sure today tomorrow we get the home price index we get consumer confidence we get the nfl combine don't know why I threw that in there. Just thought I would take some notes and see what sticks to the wall. But tomorrow we also get Norwegian Cruise Lines, JM Smuckers, AutoZone, Lowe's, Kava, Cracker Barrel, Macy's, Beyond Meat, Virgin Galactic, eBay, Redfin. See, there's a lot of companies still re- to report. Wednesday AMC movie theaters, uh, right before the big Dune uh, 2 movie, and that $25 bucket of popcorn souvenir. Would you spend $25 on a popcorn souvenir? Uh, yes, it looks like a sandworm, and there's a lot of risque, R-rated things being said about the bucket of popcorn, which you're like, really? Trust me, I was a little shocked myself. Uh, Thursday, I'm going to be interested in seeing what, how Best Buy does. How does the consumer approach electronics right now? A lot of companies that you own, like NVIDIA, like Apple, are consumer electronic products, right? I don't own any NVIDIA, or I'm sorry, I don't own any Best Buy. But I own stocks in companies that are inside of Best Buy, like NVIDIA and Microsoft and Apple. Stocks are drifting today after record-setting week, taking a little bit of a breather. New inflation data in the coming days will test the staying power of the breakout that we had after NVIDIA's results. Investors are already weighing the chances of surprise in the PCE index reading. Of note, over the weekend, we saw that the lunar landing kind of went bust. Intuitive Machines, Odysseus sent back first images of the moon. Cool. But its landing gear got stuck sideways while touching down. It tipped over and it's going to run out of power as the solar panels stop working when they're not facing the sun. Um, So tomorrow morning, that mission is a bust. Stock is down 30% in trading. From Friday to Monday, Tesla rival BYD out of China. Some people think that's the, the electric car play. I'm just not playing. That. Anything that manufactures cars, even if they're electric and or not. I know that makes me a snob, but I won't buy airlines. I learned that lesson from Warren Buffett some 50 years ago, uh, maybe 45 years ago. I'm not buying them. airplanes companies. I'm not buying uh, car companies. Now, again, I do own Tesla in an S&P 500 index for sure, uh, but you get the idea I won't take on that specific risk, even though I think the company probably has upsides from here. This is the first time I've been interested in Tesla in many, 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 many years. Tesla rival BYD is going to introduce a supercar to take on Ferrari. Uh, Only $233,000. The U9 will be able to reach a top speed of over 192 miles per hour and go 0 to 60 in about 2.5 seconds. In a pea a protein pickle, Beyond Meat reports tomorrow. Their stock is down 50% since it started last year. 
Um, I tried Beyond Meat and I put it in like a red sauce for spaghetti and with my children and it was fine. The problem was it was really salty and it was more expensive than than beef, ground beef. And um, long story short, um, the meat lobby outspends the anti-meat lobby or alt meat competitors by 190 times. CVS is partnering with Grubhub to deliver goods from 6,000 stores in 48 states. I think that's really cool. As I've aged 25 years ago, I would have said, eh, I don't really need anything from Rite Aid or CVS or what have you. Um, now, as I'm aging, my driving's not great at nighttime. It's, it's, I don't know if it's ocular issues or what have you, but I do not like being on dark roads. And I might be on highways, but the dark roads freak me out a little bit. Um, and I just drive slower. I'm fine. Haven't been in an accident in 25 plus years. Uh, have been in an accident that I've caused in 35 years, but you get where I'm going at with that. Um, CVS is partnering with Grubhub to deliver goods from 6,000 stores. I think that's a good story. I like that. Warren Buffett is splashing water on the stock market, saying it looks meh. The 93-year-old greatest investor of all time said there's no possibility of eye-popping performance in the coming years. He's made plenty of deals in the past to pump money into companies like Geico and Dairy Queen, insurance giant Allegheny. But he's not seeing anything. Back in the start of 2022, he poured $50 billion into stocks. But those days are in the past because we're deep into 2024. Company Berkshire Hathaway will pursue anything that looks unique and lucrative. But right now, not many businesses seem to be exciting Warren Buffett. Last big investments were in some Chinese um, securities companies, stock companies. Berkshire Hathaway has a record $168 billion of cash, telling you record level of cash. That's a little problematic. Can't find anything to buy. He's the greatest investor of all time considered in value. And he's just not that excited. That tells me there's a lot of stocks out there. Now, how many of them would, would be needle changing moments for Warren Buffett? That's tough to say. Not many. Warren Buffett said, though, over the weekend, he doesn't like stock apps. He says the market now exhibit far more casino-like behavior than they did when I was young. The casino now resides in many homes and daily tempts the occupants. True. I have a, a listener who's asking me what he should do with NVIDIA, and I can't give specific advice. Um, I can talk about it later in the show, but I cannot give specific advice on what you should and shouldn't do. I don't know you. Uh, Dune 2 is going to hit theaters on Friday. $26 sandworm popcorn bucket. Um, Hollywood needs this because in the last four years, three years, I could think of uh, Avatar, The Way of the Water. That brought in $2.3 billion. Barbie, Oppenheimer. And then I start losing like, what was big? Anyhow and anyway, I'm Rob Black talking all things financial money investing and more. Stay with me. The show will get better. I promise. I have lots of content. It's a fresh start to the week. After taking a couple days off to enjoy my family and a little bit of skiing on Ski Week in California, don't know what that is. It's a whole week off to enjoy skiing. <laughs> Weird. Um, got a new event that's launched on my page, Rob Black Show. It's coming up March 23rd. It's about retirement and it's in Lafayette. Learn more at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. Don't want to work forever? Check out the retirement planning guide on robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. Let's hit as many stories as we can. Um, some quick headlines that I saw out there that I'm going to get to in more detail in my research, and I'll decide if I should bring them on air or not. But Google has announced some new features, including Gemini integration with messages, AI-powered text summaries for Android Auto, and AI-generated image captions. It continues to move forward. The question is, have we really found something that's truly spectacular? And what, the one that I've seen, and this is not my idea, but it's the, a lot of AI is going to be used to like do some simpler tasks before they do more complicated tasks that you're going to know about. There's something called B-roll in news. And B-roll might be, I do a story about a single woman retiring with 1.2 million and she retire on that. And if I were to create a video out of it, I can ask AI, um, I can type in 
um, show me a 70 year old single woman concerned about her finances. And that may not be the right prompt. It may take a couple times. Show me a 70 year old single female um, worried about paying her grocery bills and how long her finances will last in retirement. And the B-roll footage is pretty darn good. Now, if I had to go out and pay stock photographers and everything like that for that, that's going to cost me an arm and a leg to either shoot the video or to buy the video. Um, so AI is still really interesting out there. Qualcomm has unveiled an AI hub, a new library of 75 plus pre-optimized AI models. I think Qualcomm has an interesting play here. A suite of AI, 5G, and Wi-Fi devices at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. That's going on. Apple is considering a fitness ring, smart glasses, and adding cameras and more advanced AI to AirPods. Adding cameras to AirPods? Um, but not actively developing these devices, just in the research lab, so to speak. I find um, doing research on research to be part of the job. Amazon and Uber investors, they've got a lot to think about right now as those stocks are joining the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I own both Amazon and Uber. I told you mid last year that I was buying Uber as I saw two quarters of profitability and I saw two more quarters and they could be added to the S&P 500. And they were. And that kind of came to fruition. It's a long-term hold for me. It's not a trade. Um, but I got in at a trading valuation because I did my research and I shared it with you on this show. Amazon and Uber are replacing JetBlue Airways and Walgreens, Boot Alliance, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Plenty of market research uh, shows that stocks deleted from index often outperform the stocks that replace them. So um, Uber is going to the Dow Jones Transports. Amazon is going to the Dow Jones 30. Consider what happened the last time the Dow's composite changed. Salesforce replaced ExxonMobil. Since then, ExxonMobil's trounced Salesforce shares, producing an annualized return of 36% versus 9.2% for Salesforce. It's something to think about that the people who do the Dow Jones um, indexes or indices sometimes are behind the curve, that they, they add names after they've had a big run. Interesting though, right? Now again, this is just a study, but I'm already looking at the next companies to be added to the S&P 500. That's part of what the research I do. I've shared with you through the years, I like total addressable market. I like companies with 100 million to 1 billion plus users. Uh, that's TAM, total addressable market. I like companies that maybe they're one of two options like Spotify or Apple Music for your music needs on your entertainment. Maybe through your phone, you know? I like companies that have a leadership position. Um, I told everyone I was buying NVIDIA last year when the stock was in the low 100s, in large part due to the idea, the concept um, that they were a leader. And I like buying the Magnificent 7 when they're 10, 20, 30, 40% from their all time highs. 40% is a screaming deal to me, potentially, as they make the best AI chips and they also make the best um, GPU chips, in my opinion. Now, again, no disrespect to AMD. I just, if you got to choose one, that's what I'm going to say. Um, on top of that, um, NVIDIA has, if you take a look at their last six quarters, you can see that they have now one more quarter to go that looks truly magnificent on a year over year. I look at quarters on a year over year, but also look on a quarter to quarter. The quarter to quarter growth this quarter wasn't as spectacular as it was the previous quarter, but the year over year still was. Um, I look at companies like Caterpillar for the long term stock I own, um, for the dividend, and for the fact of if I decide to get in a bulldozer or get in a digger and destroy my home, there's only two or three companies that I think they can summon the gear to do that. You with me? You against me. You got to choose a side because this is a sore. Um, so Google adding AI to Google Messages and Android Auto, that's not something that gets me excited. I actually like the numbers of their quarters before I look at like, oh, that's a good press release. 
Today, we're seeing kind of a little bit of a mixed market, a meh market, if you will. Buffett said it. He's built last, but he's uh, not exactly excited about anything in the stock market because he's got a record amount of cash. He's buying back his own shares more so than he's buying other companies. Read a cute review in Wired Magazine where a woman watched a lot of sad movies in her Apple's headset, the Apple Vision Pro. And she talked about it was strangely emotional. The weight of the headset and the aloneness distracted her from the movies. And she said that when she took off the headset, the, the rubber band, the rubber material at the bottom was soaked because she was crying ceaselessly in a high voice, crying in hiccups and uh, crying out loud. I enjoyed that review by her, that it put her in a emotional state, but that she didn't really like being in an emotional state by herself where she couldn't really monitor her emotions. Um, don't know what we're going to make of the Apple Vision Pro yet, do we? The sales numbers are impressive. The returns numbers are high. But in year zero of app development, they're doing okay. We got to kind of got to wait till years one, two to really know more. Big event coming up March 23rd, Saturday in Lafayette. Learn more at robblackshow.com. What's the best way to choose a financial advisor? Download our guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. I've got so much scar tissue in my body from living a tough life physically that sometimes I don't feel pain. It's worthy of note, right? Um, I was reading over Warren Buffett's notes from this weekend and his shareholder letter to these investors. And I always read it. I think it's a great read. I think it's a must read. I think it's a fun read. I think it's educational and much, much more. And he doesn't really exaggerate. And he's not really one to use the media to his best interests. Unlike Jim Cramer. I, I like a lot of what Jim Cramer is about. I hate that he has an investment club that charges a lot of money. Because the average person who's using it shouldn't be paying a lot of money. They should be accumulating indexes. They shouldn't be trying to become stock pickers or hedge fund managers. Um, but one of the things I disliked about um, Jim Cramer, and I read about two books a week. Uh, my book budget is larger than your book budget, and I'm willing to bet. And one of the things I dislike about Cramer is that he would say, I would call CNBC and kind of like lie. He said, I'd get Maria Bartiromo on the phone before the opening bell, and I would, you know, plant a rumor. He admits it in one of his books, so I'm not saying anything slanderous or uh, that's going to get me in trouble. I throw that out there like, is... Warren Buffett's not like that. Anything that Warren Buffett says to me is pretty nice and pretty sweet. He looked at the future. He said, man, he's got $168 billion in cash. Now, where I told you I've got a lot of scar tissue and sometimes I don't feel pain. That's easy to look at 168 billion and say, ah, that's just 168 million. But he has 168 billion dollars in cash right now, and he can't find things to buy. Now, again, he likes things like Dairy Queen and Geico and insurance companies like Allegheny, uh, Coca Cola. He did trim some Apple shares. Remember, he became famous for finally getting in on the Apple bandwagon, and his investment's been amazing. He sold 10 million shares. I'm like, is that 10 billion? Nope. 10 million. It's the whole million versus billion where I'm like, little scar tissue. It's tough to impress me with numbers because we just saw uh, in video last week hit $2 trillion investment uh, valuation. But he sold off 10 million shares of Apple stock in the final three months of 2023. That's what we learned in his letter. It's one person of his holding. So he didn't really say, I'm out. But he also didn't really say, I'm in. Maybe it's a little bit of a meh. Maybe it's a little bit of a, uh, there's other things we should be buying, raising cash. He still has 905 million shares and he sold 10 million. Now, again, that is money that I wish I had 10 million shares, right? Um, he still owns 174 billion worth, but he's not accumulating. You got to be honest and say he's not accumulating. Avatar The Way of the Water brought in $2.3 billion globally, and Barbie and Oppenheimer brought in over $2 billion combined. 
I, I feel a little pain. Like this weekend, we're going to see Dune open up to 60 million to 80 million. It's going to be the biggest movie so far this year. That's not saying a lot, seeing that we're only in late February. But box offices are down 15% so far for the year. A lot of people want me to comment on AMC, and I just I don't like the industry, and I don't like the fact that the company has so much debt. So I'm staying away. If you want to go, ooh, there's going to be big blockbuster movies, good for you. But the debt of the company is problematic to me. And do I see the company surviving? Yes, but maybe through bankruptcy? And that hurts shareholders. And I stream a lot. So I watched Dune 1 because I've never seen it before. Streamed it this weekend. Just in case my kids say, hey, dad, let's go to the movie theaters this weekend. I'll be like, yep, let's go. The Rotten Tomatoes score is pretty high, which means people have seen it love it. Um, is it going to change my life? No. But if it's time with my kids, absolutely, I would do it. Analysts expect revenues this year to dip 5% from last year, in large part due to um, the writer strike. And down about 20% pre-COVID. I'm surprised we're only down 20% pre-COVID. So that's some business stories out there. And if you don't love this show, I don't know what else to do for you. Um, car prices are finally coming down. It looks like a buyer's market. Beep, beep. My little sister, when I was her older brother, she was born when I was eight. It was the coolest day of my life up until that point. And still in one of the top 10 moments. My little sister came home from the hospital and she was just this tiny little bug of an animal creature thing filled with snot and poop. And um, she used like Donna Summer's Bad Girl song when she's like three or four. So anytime I see a car store, I go, toot toot. Yeah, beep beep. And it's kind of funny to hear a four-year-old girl sing Bad Girl, such a naughty, naughty girl. <laughs> But every time I see car stories, that's the first thought of my head is my little sister. I have an emotional memory. Uh, so I remember emotions more so than I remember facts um, or in a linear fashion. So my memory is different than yours or probably different than yours. Um, and I have been diagnosed with that, by the way. So car prices are finally coming down. It looks like a buyer's market. The high cost of new cars has been a thing with buyers. And investors for a few years since COVID-19 disrupted the global market. The average cost of a new car in the U.S. is roughly $47,000. That's up 10000 pre-pandemic levels. The higher price combined with higher interest rates means a typical car payment has increased 33% before the pandemic. But interest rates are just off peak levels, and the average price of a new car has dropped almost 3000 bucks from highs reached in November, uh, December 2022. That's improved affordability. That's positive in the inflation front. Wages have increased, and I'm not crazy about auto investments. I don't own any. I don't any own any airplane uh, travel investments. In the past, I would have been open to owning Boeing, but man, that company has hit us a, a run of cockroaches, so to speak. And when there's one problem, there's multiple problems. There's one cockroach, there's multiple cockroaches, they say. Well, cockroaches are more of an East Coast thing, I think. Um, I've never really seen one on the West Coast, but I can tell, but maybe I'm not looking anymore. Maybe my eyes went bad or something. Um, but again, I'm teaching you what I've done to accumulate while I've stayed away from car companies. Okay, I miss Tesla. That's fine. I own it in S&P 500 funds. Um, and I don't own airplane companies. And I don't like the industry. You saw American and... Uh, another airline last week raised luggage prices. And I, I just think they're glorious buses in the air. Um, United Airlines, I, I don't like the company. Uh, my kid went to Boston to see his friend that moved away from California because the California got so expensive uh, 10 days ago, 15 days ago. He went part of his winter break. And the best flight was United from SFO to Boston. And... Um, you know, he's flying out and the tickets maybe 400 350 let's say round trip but then the bag cost and the seat to get a seat assignment cost and like suddenly 400 dollars plus taxes almost 500 plus a seat assignment is 560 plus a bag is well they raise it from 30 bucks 35 or 35 to 40 depending on if you do it online or not and 
I just don't like the industry. So I just see it as a big bus in the sky. And I've never been on a bus and gone, wow, this is a great bus. This is a great bus. I've looked at airlines as taking me from point A to point B. Um, now I'm getting the age and, and the wealth level where I can fly first class. If I were to go to Europe, I'd fly first class. Um, only because I have wealth. If I still accumulate wealth, there's no chance on the planet. Zero. You do what you do. I'm just telling you what I've done. Maybe it helps. Maybe it doesn't. And I totally get that. Earlier in the show, I talked about how Amazon joining the Dow, Jones Industrial Average today, was a negative potentially, as a lot of times the stocks are kicked out so that we can add one more to the 30. Uh, you got to kick one out to add one. A lot of times the ones that are kicked out tend to do better, as evidenced many years ago. Um, when ExxonMobil got kicked out and they got replaced with a tech company that the Dow was like, oh, it's going to be a big tech company. But long story short, ExxonMobil then went on a tear up and kind of made people look silly. Do I wish NVIDIA was involved in the Dow Jones Industrial Average 30 and not Intel? Yeah, I do. Yeah. The three largest tech stocks in the Dow by market cap as of Friday are Apple, Microsoft, and Salesforce. Uh, Walgreens getting kicked out seems to be a negative for Walgreens, but will they be a winner now? That's a good question. There is a question, though. Uh, the Motley Fool is another group that I don't really like. And again, I'm just giving my personal experience. I tend to find that the Motley Fools in the early 90s, that I think they did a really, really nice job of getting average people into the stock market. Because they had that brother approach to this is how our dad made money. He accumulated it. And then they sold out and the company became more corporate and it aimed on how do we get the average investor invested? And I don't really consider them financial advice. I consider them second opinions from a friend. Um, but yeah, the post that I just saw from about three years ago is NVIDIA about to replace Intel in the Dow. <laughs> Isn't that funny? 30. That would have been, that would have pushed the Dow to record highs, to say the least, a little bit faster. Anyhow, and anyway, you can find me online at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. Anything you want to talk about, we can talk about money, investing, and more. I do have a new event coming up March 23rd, 10 to noon on a Saturday at the Don Tatson Community Hall. It's Crafting Your Retirement with a woman, Stephanie Richmond. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial. Sign up at robblackshow.com. Questions about Social Security? Check out the Social Security Retirement Guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. So I was talking about fact-checking myself on the air. There will be errors on this show, and you should always consult a broker or advisor to take any action on any stocks ever mentioned. Um, I did fact-check myself to make sure that Intel was involved, truly indeed still in Intel Trans Industrial Average 30, in case I missed the day that they were reshuffling. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm getting senile. I don't think so. But the S&P, uh, I just, I bring that up because you really should always fact check everything you hear when it comes to investing. And when I, I didn't diss the Molly Fools, they're just not my cup of tea. I, I don't like that group. Hey, we have a newsletter out and hey, we have a new recommendation. Um, that's not my thing. I think the brothers were truly gems when they would talk about how their dad taught them about investing. I, I hope none of that was embellished because it was truly sweet. I have a funny story about the Motley Fools. I used to share an office in the same building as they did on Duke Street in Alexandria, Virginia. And um, this was 25 years ago, roughly, right? And they would look to get publicity and they would park their car in the middle of traffic and start, park their van and it, it was painted like a joker kind of thing. And it used to drive me insane because I was two blocks from my office and two blocks in the parking garage and I couldn't get there because they're looking for publicity. Now, again, maybe their van broke down and I don't know the true story, but I don't know. Um, so today I'm looking at ding, 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 um, the market numbers. I'm seeing oils higher. That's very interesting to me. Um, I go, why? 
I see the NASDAQ having a good day, up one quarter, one percent. Can't complain with that. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up fractions. When I say fractions, I'm talking about less than one tenth of a percent. And the SP 500 down fractions. It's almost break even. I see the Russell 2000 up one half of one percent. Now, remember that number one half of one percent. Um, so far for the year, the S&P 500 is up 6.7%. Last week was a glorious week to be an investor. Big move up in the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow. So the S&P 500 is up 6.7% for the year. The NASDAQ is up 6.6% for the year. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 3.8% for the year. And it's the end of February. So let's say we got, that's, that's times those numbers by six. Because we're, we're, you know, two twelfths done for the year. One sixth done for the year. If we were to boil down our fractions, uh, do we think the S&P 500s can end up 36% for the year? The NASDAQ, 36% for the year? The Dow, 19% for the year? The S&P 400 mid-cap is, down, is up 2.8% for the year? Um, that could realistically be up 13 14% for the year. And the Russell 2000 is down one half a percent. Now, remember, I just said for the year, the Russell 2000 is up one half of a percent for the day and down one half a percent for the year. Let's break even. If you were to say to me, how do you feel about those five indices? Which one do you like the best? I'd probably say the Russell or the S&P mid, S&P 400 mid, um, because we've had a big 14, 15 months in the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. I really don't care about the Dow Jones Special Average 30 because it's 30 stocks and some of them I like, some of them I don't. So why would I care about that? It's not reflective of anything to me. Um, anyway, that's just some market numbers year to date. There you go. Um, women and investing. Women need to know things before they retire. Uh, one woman uh, I saw a recent article on that, that she remarried uh, got a second husband, and then she got a notice from the IRS, guess what, you owe $1,600 because your husband owes back taxes. Whoops, is that a reason for divorce? That he didn't tell you that before you got married? The husband blamed his ex-wife for not filing their returns properly. Then a few months later, the IRS put a levy on their joint bank account and froze the funds. Her husband again blamed his ex-wife, but it turns out that withheld taxes weren't being paid to the IRS. After two years of wrangling, This 64-year-old woman forked over $50,000 to clean up the debt and clear her name. Um, There were no signs that he wasn't financially stable. There was no reason for her to think that there was a financial issue. There was no reason for her to think he had an IRS problem. Here's what women need to know. They earn 84 cents for each dollar a man earns. That comes about $900,000 over a lifetime. That's embarrassing for our society. We should take better care of women. I'm not saying we should take less care of men. I'm saying we should take better care of women. Women have substantially less saved in retirement accounts than men. Women tend to live more years in retirement and need more money to live in retirement. Because there's a greater chance the longer you live that you're going to drain your sources of income. Women represent 55% of all Social Security beneficiaries 60 and older. And their percentages rise as the senior population ages. Let me say that again slowly. Women represent 55% of all Social Security beneficiaries, 60 and older. And their percentage rises as the population ages. Men tend to die off quicker. About 63% of Social Security beneficiaries are now over 85, are women. 63% of over 85 are women. The highest percentage of divorces involving couples are between the ages of 55 and 64. So women in retirement and women and figuring out what Social Security means and everything else in that number is super important. I do look at women as different investors than men. I wish times I had uh, a woman co-host or maybe a guest host once a month, uh, once a week. Um, that can speak to these issues because I can't do it as well as a woman could. One. A spouse's death opens a Pandora's box of financial issues that surviving women learn that they have to contend with. There's a term in the financial industry called widow brain. There's so much that you have to do. 
My mother was lucky that she had a son in finance and another son who was a lawyer who was able to, to basically hold her hand because she was not financially savvy. She passed away a couple of years ago due to COVID. I miss her. Um, anyway, I'm going to be doing an event with a woman. I'm very excited about this. Stephanie Richmond, she's one of the top CFPs in the nation, female CFPs, Saturday, March 23rd, 2024. It's coming up 10 a.m. to noon at the Don Patson Community Hall. Lafayette Library. It's going to be about crafting your retirement. So I'm going to be on the East Bay okay. with a female CFP. I couldn't be more excited. Coming up in about a month on a Saturday. Sign up at robblackshow.com. This one always fills up. robblackshow.com. For more information about EP Wealth, visit robblack.com. That's robblack.com.